I've got a nice geometry problem for you guys today. And we're in my basement. And in fact, as you see, it's under construction. And this is the wall where the chalkboard is going to hang once we're all finished. Obviously, it's pretty echoey in here, but I'll eventually have a nice sound treated studio that we can make great videos with. Okay, so let's look at the statement of the problem. We want to find the following shaded area. And what we have is a right triangle with a base of one. And then we've got a quarter circle with a radius of one. And then this right triangle has a height so that the area of the triangle is the same thing as the area of the quarter circle. And our goal is to find this shaded area up here. So this is pretty similar to another video that I did fairly recently, but as we'll see, the solution here is a bit more complicated and the final result is not quite as pretty. So let's look at a solution. So I'm going to introduce a coordinate system. So I'll call this point right here the origin. So that'll be 0, 0. Okay, and that makes this point right here 1, 0 because we're going to put the x-axis as the horizontal axis. That's pretty standard. Now we just have to figure out the height of this triangle. And that's going to be follow. And that'll quickly follow by this condition right here. The area of the triangle is the same thing as the area of the quarter circle. So we know that the area of an entire circle with radius 1 will just be pi times 1 squared or just pi. But that means a quarter circle will have area pi over 4 because it's a quarter of an entire circle. And then we also know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. But here we have a base of 1 which means the height has to be such that when we take half of it, we get pi over 4. But that's pretty easy to calculate as well. Here we'll have this is going to be pi over 2. Uh, 0 comma pi over 2, I guess I should say, if we want to put it as a coordinate. OK, great. And then next what we'll do is write each of these as curves. And what I mean write each of these as curves, I'm going to write this line going from here to here as a curve, and then this quarter circle also as a curve with an equation. So let's see how we can do that. So this line, well, notice that it, it is a, <clears throat> well, so notice that it has a y-intercept of pi over 2, and then it has a slope of negative pi over 2. So we can easily write this as y equals negative pi over 2 times x plus pi over 2. OK. And then this quarter circle, well, we know that the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus equals 1. But then we can solve for y in this case, especially because we are only in the first quadrant. And we can say, see that this is going to be y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's maybe go ahead and circle these. We have this. That's the equation of our quarter circle. And we have this. That's the equation of our line. And now we'll use calculus in order to find this shaded area. And I know a bunch of you guys are going to say that calculus is overkill, but I think maybe this is the right strategy here. I don't think it's really that much overkill. So we're going to do the integral from 0 to whatever this intersection point is. So we've got to find that intersection point of the top curve minus the bottom curve. OK, so let's maybe go ahead and figure out this intersection point, and then we can move on to the next step. So in order to figure out the intersection point, we need to set this curve equal to this curve. So I can make this a little bit simpler by factoring out a pi over 2. So I've got pi over 2. And then this is going to be 1 minus x. So notice I've just rearranged things a little bit, but that's not too bad. And then we've got this is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So the square root of 1 minus x squared. But I'm going to write that as 1 minus x times 1 plus x because I can factor that using my standard difference of squares formula. OK. Now, the standard strategy here would be just to square both sides and then solve the resulting quadratic equation. But I think we can actually use a little bit of a trick so that we only have to solve a linear equation. 
And that trick will be to square this and then take the square root. So that might be problematic if our x values were not between zero and one, but they most definitely are given the shape of our intersecting section. But now, since x equals one is not the intersection point that we are interested in, we can divide by one minus x, and that's gonna turn this into just one minus x, and that'll cancel this out. So now we've got pi over two times the square root of one minus x equals the square root of one plus x. Now we can square both sides and we'll get pi squared over four times one minus x equals one plus x. And now we can just continue solving this. So we've got pi squared over four minus pi squared over four x equals one plus x. Maybe we would like to move this to the right-hand side of the equation and this to the left-hand side of the equation. That'll give me pi squared over four minus one equals pi squared over four plus one times x. Where I've taken advantage of the fact that I can factor an x out of what is resulting on the right-hand side. Okay, so now I can maybe multiply both sides of this equation by four, and that won't change anything, but that'll make it look a little simpler. That will get rid of this denominator, put a four here, get rid of this denominator, and put a four here. But that allows us to solve for x, and we get x equals pi squared minus four over pi squared plus four. So that, in fact, is our intersection point. So let's maybe add that point in right here. We've got this is pi squared minus four over pi squared plus four. And now we're ready to set up our integral. So earlier I said we were gonna do this by calculating an integral, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. And I found out the right-hand endpoint of that integral on the last board. And now we're ready to go. So we wanna take the integral from zero to this number right here, so that's gonna be pi squared minus four over pi squared plus four of the top curve minus the bottom curve. But just like I did on the last board, I'm gonna rewrite this top curve in its kind of nicer form. And let's recall that that was pi over two times one minus x. And then we've gotta subtract that bottom curve, so that's gonna be minus the square root of one minus x squared and then here we've got a dx. Okay, so now that's looking good, but now what we would like to do is integrate this a little bit at a time. So notice that this is a linear function, so that's not so hard to integrate. This is a little bit trickier to integrate. We probably wanna use maybe trigonometric substitution. And while we're at it, I'm gonna give a name to this number so that I can just save it until the end um, since it's a little bit complicated to write down. So I'll call that alpha. So now I've got that this is the integral from zero to alpha of pi halves times one minus x dx minus the integral from zero to alpha of the square root of one minus x squared dx. But now we can take these antiderivatives. So this antiderivative is not too bad. We'll have that this is pi over two, and then we're gonna have x minus x squared over two evaluated from zero to alpha. So let's see what that's gonna give us. That's gonna give us pi over two times alpha minus alpha squared over two, where again, alpha is this number up here, pi squared minus four over pi squared plus four. Now we can go about taking this integral. Like I said, we're gonna use a trig substitution. So let's go ahead and let x equal sine theta. If you'll recall, sine theta is the standard substitution if you have a term like one minus x squared under a square root. That tells us that dx is equal to cosine. And usually what I do is change my bounds of integration, but since my upper bound of integration is kind of complicated, let's not do that and we'll just put everything back in terms of x at the end. Okay, so let's see what we've got now. So if x is sine theta, 
dx is cosine theta, I guess I should say d theta, then notice 1 minus x squared is cosine theta as well, using the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that means if we take the square root, we get that this is cos theta, and then this dx is also cosine theta, meaning we have that this is going to be the integral from something to something, where we'll change the bounds back to x bounds at the end, of cosine squared theta d theta. And now we like to talk about how to take this antiderivative. And we generally do this with integration by parts. And I've got a slick trick that I like to use for integrating things like this using integration by parts. And what we'll do is take this, multiply by a half, and then add it to itself. So this is going to be the integral from something to something of cosine squared theta. OK, so now that we're at this point, let's bring that up and then we'll finish it off. So far, we're at the following place. We've got alpha is equal to this pi squared minus 4 over pi squared plus 4. And then we've got our shaded area is pi over 2 times alpha minus alpha squared over 2 minus half the integral from something to something of cosine squared, where we're not going to worry about that something because we're going to put that back into x bounds of integration eventually. And then we've got plus the integral from the same thing to the same thing of cosine times cosine. So notice that these are the same integral. So I'm using this like integration by parts trick in order to calculate this integral. OK, so now I'll let this equal u and this equal dv. But that means that du is equal to minus sine theta d theta, and that means that v is equal to sine theta. Just using the standard derivative and antiderivative of cosine. OK, so that means that we can take this and rewrite it as minus 1 half the integral from something to something of cosine squared theta d theta. So I've just brought that down. And then applying the integration by parts formula here, I have that this is going to be u times v. So that's going to be plus cosine times sine. So I've got cosine theta sine theta minus the integral of v du. But that's going to cancel with this minus sine giving me plus the integral of v du. But that's going to be the integral of sine squared. But I can write that as 1 minus cosine squared, given that sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So I'm going to do that. We've got 1 minus cosine squared theta d theta, like that. But now here's where the magic happens. We can take this and cancel this integral with this minus cosine squared integral. And then that'll integrate out just to theta. So let's maybe write that down. The integral of this will just be theta. But now we're ready to put everything back in terms of x. So let's bring some of this down. We have pi over 2, alpha minus alpha squared over 2, minus 1 half times, well, now we've got cosine theta times sine theta. Let's recall that sine theta was equal to x. And cosine theta was, in fact, equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. We had that on the last board, but I'll let you guys check that if you need to. But let's just recall that our substitution was x equals sine theta. So you can use a Pythagorean identity to get that cosine theta will be square root of 1 minus x squared. OK. And then we've got that this is going to be plus theta. But if x is sine theta, theta is the arc sine of x. So we can write this as plus arc sine of x. And now we need to take all of this and evaluate it from x equals 0 to x equals alpha, like that. OK, but now we're ready to plug this in. Notice each of these evaluated at x equals 0 is just 0. So evaluating at x equals alpha is the only thing that really matters, giving us our final solution. So this is pi over 2 alpha minus alpha squared over 2 minus half alpha times the square root of 1 minus alpha squared plus the arc sine of alpha. 
Okay, but if we want to put that back in terms of just pi and more common rational numbers, we can do that as follows. And there we've got our final answer. So as you can see, it's a mouthful. We've got pi to the six plus pi to the four minus two pi cubed minus two pi squared plus eight pi all over pi squared plus four squared minus half arc sine of pi squared minus four over pi squared plus four. And that's a good place to stop.